the one person commodity trading firm is a business model that allows you to create your ideal lifestyle. If you set it up right, you can have location freedom as well as time freedom. I know, I know, I sound like a life coach, but stick with me, you'll see, it will make sense. At its core, physical commodity trading is a service business. As a physical trader, you provide a service, and this service is not tied up to one location. For instance, if you are a dentist, you are not location free unlike an IT engineer that only needs Wi-Fi to provide his service. The internet has given the ability to anyone to become an entrepreneur. And some commodity traders have seized this opportunity and are squeezing hard. This new way of doing business is here to stay and even for me, it was a bit difficult to accept it. I was one of those who was saying, ah, but you cannot scale alone, you cannot do everything alone, you only have 24 hours in a day, you must take too much risk, ah, it's not possible. But as a matter of fact, I know three people that run a multi-million commodity trading business alone. So I had to reconsider my view. If you've been following me on YouTube, you know that I have associates in each of my commodity companies because I think it to do it alone. But this is my own biases. So in this video, I'm going to deconstruct their three businesses so you can learn from it and maybe apply some of those ideas in your business. In order to analyze the three businesses the same way, I'm going to use a very simple framework. We are going to see how they end up four core activities of a trading company. The supply side, the sell side, the finance, and the logistic. And also to protect uh, their anonymity, um, obviously I'm not going to reveal any details or things about their identity. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I hope that you understand. All right, let's dive in. Crymill is a dairy trader and he is specialized in very small and obscure destination countries. Think about very small islands that you've never heard of or extremely poor and challenging countries. In those countries, he would partner up with a local distributor and then would go to the biggest and the most reliable dairy factories to get an exclusivity agreement for those destinations. Usually, it's difficult to get any type of exclusivity, especially when you are a small company. But as it focuses on very small and difficult market, it's easier for the supplier to say yes, as they don't really have anything to, to lose. <laughs> By doing so, he removes or at least make it extremely difficult for any one of his local distributor to bypass him. Then, once this is set up, he outsources the logistic to a third party company. And yeah, if you don't know, there is like a bunch of companies that will do um, execution of physical contract on behalf of traders. So in terms of financing, he has a little bit of equity just to get it started. But then he relies mostly on his suppliers. Those companies are huge company and they have the mean to give him credit. So this is what he mostly relies on. So to sum up on the supply side, he worked with the biggest and the most reliable company and managed to strike an exclusivity agreement for his destination. On the buy side, he works with local distributor, one in each country. On the finance side, he used his supplier's money. And on the logistic side, he outsourced everything to our third party company. Now, how much money does he make? <laughs> You want to know. So he must be doing between 200k to 800k per month in revenue. Margin should be around 7 to 8%, maybe even a little bit more. So that means that he could pocket uh, during the slow months, maybe only 10,000k, up to 50k and more when uh, he has better volume. So that's it for Crime Inc. So surely she is a copper trader. She worked with small smelter and small mine in Africa and then sell the copper directly to China. In terms of financing, she worked with a couple of commodity trade finance funds that 
also do the operation for her. And this is genius if you think about it, because the Commodity Trade Finance Fund, they are completely happy to, to do the operation and they are the one that led the money. So at least they feel like they have the control of what is going on with the cargo. And don't forget that most of those firms work on a collateral basis. So that means that they lend money and the product is the collateral of the loan. And in the case of Sean Lee, she makes a killing. <laughs> During the slow years, she pockets roughly half a million US dollar in profit per year. But the last couple of years was completely crazy in terms of uh, volatility. And I, I, know, <laughs> I know that uh, she made like more than 10 million in profit um, the, the last uh, years. Uh, so this is completely insane. I know that you must probably not believe me, but yeah. A little 1% company made two years in a row more than 10 million in profit. That's insane. That's it for Chun-Li. Icarus is a very funny guy. Originally, he was a chemical trader, as he holds a master in uh, chemical engineering. Um, and his trade flows are a little bit different than the two others that we saw. So, Icarus focuses on tolling agreement. So a tolling agreement is when you provide a factory, a tolling facility with commodity, raw material, and then they produce for you. For instance, it's quite common in the world of coffee where traders supply green coffee to a roasting facility and then get roasted beans. In biomass, a tolling agreement would be you provide wood chip and then you get wood pallet and so on. What is genius with his model is that he only works again with the biggest and the most reliable factories, which means that when he says to someone that he sells product from that specific factory, everyone is quite amazed or a little bit suspicious because usually those big names only work with older big names. So when he carries with his one person company, he can supply from that uh, factory or that factory, everyone gets a little bit, yeah. It's too special. Everyone wonders, like, how does he get an allocation there? Because <laughs> usually they only work with other Fortune 500 companies. And so this is why his model is genius, because he found an angle and he saw that if he would supply raw materials, commodity to that um, tolling facility or that uh, factory, he would get product branded under this uh, factory and it would help him a lot selling those. And for the financing, like a crime milk, he puts the maximum burden of financing on the um, processing facilities. And he even operates in a very funny way because he asks the purchasing department of the processing facility, because all those big factories, you know, they have people in charge of purchasing the raw material, to directly contact his supplier. <laughs> now, how much money does he make? You want to know? Huh? You want to know? <laughs> so I know that he does a little bit more than 10 million per year in revenue. I'm not really clear about his margin, but I think it will be roughly 5% to do the <laughs> thing. So I guess he makes half a million um, in profit uh, every year. That would be my, my guess. So not too shabby for a one person commodity trading firm. Few rules if you want to build the same type of company are those three characters. <laughs> you need to think uh, about maximum leverage and you need to be okay with other third party making mistakes on your behalf. For sales, try milk use existing actors as distribution channel. For logistic and finance, Chunli partner ups with CTF funds. For purchase, Icarus use the purchasing department of these big facilities to work as its own operation teams as he put them directly in contact with his own suppliers. Those three people put a lot of leverage on those relationships. And if those relationships break for whatever reason, this could be the end of their business. But I'm sure that they know that, they completely accept the risk and they are making a lot of money as it works. So, that's it for me today. I hope that you liked the video and that you learned something. And please let me know in the comments below what do you think about those business models. Is it something that you see yourself uh, doing in the future? Or oh no, you are like me, you prefer to have like associate partners to share the wins and the losses. Ciao!